Here. Ball. Here. Mills. Here. Pat. Pat. Jeff. Sam and Ryan. You. I. Other Ryan. Yeah. Two Ryan. October so projected for sunset uh, revenue we were projected at 30,121 uh, our actual revenue came in at 51,688 about 11% uh, round wise uh, projected rounds were at 2383 we came in at 3268 uh, one and a half uh, percent increase from previous October All due to weather. <laughs> weather was pretty darn good for October. Uh, November, unfortunately, is uh, not good so far. Uh, as of right now, I've been, I've been closed 13 of the 21 days. Wow. Uh, total closure last year in November was six days. So I've doubled the closed days due to the snow. Uh, rounds in revenue are down uh, so your rounds were down almost 50% uh, from last year for November, and then uh, revenue-wise, we're, we're down about 6000 in revenue. Although the punch cards that we started selling, we've sold more punch cards than last November so far. And of course, as being made a small increase, we've made a little more money off them. But we'll see. Go ahead, No, no, you're good. That's all I got. Yeah. For a sunset. I'm just curious, well, I'm saying, when you look at next year's budget, when you project revenue, do you take into account, assume, X number of snow days? It's always a guess. Like last year, for example, we didn't really get, didn't really get very long. shut down until the very first that we got the snow. Right. And then we were closed January and February the entire month of 2022. So it's really a guessing game. I look at the shoulder season as um, if we get open and get to the good play, it's kind of bonus. Right. Bonus revenue, bonus rounds. Sure. And I think that's how it's been projected in the past. If you look back at all of, at least since I've been here, I've been here 10 years. You know, yeah, you've got to project years. something. You know, like yeah. this year we projected the small you know, revenues for January and February, and we got zero. Yeah, it's generally a small yeah. amount for November, yeah. December, January. Last, last November was one of the warmest November's in history. Yeah. 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 $130,929. Bring um, them ahead by 83327 Very good year. Yeah. Increased revenues um, came in at 157907 for the month. Year to date, we're at 1848948 Brings $127,000, almost $120,000. It's been a great year. Mm -hmm. Golf has been very good. <clears throat> then looking at the rounds, Twin Peaks actual rounds for the month of October, 3,906. Um, 
what their year-to-date numbers are 36,935, which is very strong. I remember when I was just trying to get to 35,000 for the year to a big smell in the corner of oil. Um, and then for Duke Creek's rounds, actual rounds year to date are 40,248, down 651 rounds, but way ahead in revenues because, you know, raise fees and two other categories were doing very well. And I read the numbers for November as well, and um, we've been open nine days this month, 17 days in 21. We're down almost 42,000 so far for the month. But on a good note, if we get open this weekend, we will meet last year's numbers, which was a record year, which is one point almost one point nine. Just a few more days of being open, we we're gonna set it up the record year. What's the course look like? Is the snow about gone or <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I keep uh, opening and blocking the key sheet. And I think okay it's gonna go for Wednesday, you know? Oh, no. Now we're just hoping for Friday. Yeah. It's um, there's not a lot of it, but what we do have just keeps freezing over. Um, so we're hoping for Friday. Any other comments in the section? Moving on, old business, non project updates. You want to talk about irrigation first? Mm, I can. Okay. So, um, I can't remember how we left it on the last meeting, but now we are working on, um, originally we were going to do improvements to the irrigation system. It got changed to just the pump station this year. And now, what did we say, the last couple of months, we yeah. changed it. Now we're going to do Twin Peaks and Sunsets irrigation replacements scheduled for fall, starting fall of 23. As it sits right now, we have uh, our spec sheets coming to purchase you. They'll be working on it. They put it into the format. And hopefully get it out the bid here as soon as possible. What's your projected completion time? Uh, so Twin Peaks is projected to start just after Labor Day in 23 and probably be done in March or closer to June. Yeah, there you go. June, <coughs> June of 24. So that's with doing a little bit of work in the fall, pump stations over the winter, and finishing up in 24. And then the sunset would either fall right behind that, either starting in June, or in um, right after Labor Day of 24. It's all dependent on the water project that's going over there. Now, because we can't start our project till they're done, and then that one is projected uh, September, and it would be done by the end of the year. Or if it started in June, it would be done by uh, Labor Day, October. Okay. Will, will that affect people playing? Do you have to close the course at all? We won't have to. We're trying not to close the course. Oh. There'll definitely be places impacted by the project. Yeah. But it's going to work kind of like uh, road construction, where we'll be in one spot and move around. And there'll just be small parts of the course impact at a time right. oh, to get cool. it done. So all that plan is dependent on what the availability of all the companies who show interest in submit a bid. So is it mostly boring that they're gonna be doing, or are they gonna be trenching? It's gonna be a little bit of both. So our main line would be either <coughs> dug in with a backhoe or a trencher, because they'll be the six to eight inch lines at sunset and what are the eight to ten inch lines here at Twin Peaks and they'll be 48 inches down and then all our lateral lines with the heads attached to them will be full or the trench depending on what the uh, train looks like in the area. So in other words the, the how much the course is closed to some yeah. extent. Yeah the main yeah. line is going to be the part that has the biggest impact because that's the part they have to trench or dig in. Where the laterals uh, are usually each UPE pipe, so they'll have to fuse together long stretches of them and then pull the long stretch in. It's a little boring, like you do. Yeah, it's a little 
topics and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely do that. So it'll be a mixture of that and open trenching depending on what the terrain looks like, what it looks like. Yeah, okay. Okay. Any other items on the old buildings? The maintenance building, we um, have uh, completed our second submittal to the design review team. Um, we have just a few minor things that have to be addressed with with them. We've also submitted to uh, the planning department uh, for the permit. Permit's probably three months before we can get that done, and then we'll be ready to um, work with the citywide award contractors so that we won't have to go to a bid, but we get uh, as many quotes as we can from those four companies to do the construction. We're hoping that that can take place starting in February because if, if we don't start construction by March 15th, there's some wildlife issues that will oh. prohibit us from moving forward until August, after August 15th. So we're hoping to get the earthwork going so that uh, we're already in, in process before some of the birds come back. Yeah. Yep. Sunset line, anything? Yeah, he has the presentation he's going to do. Okay. Sunset presentation to be very similar to the Twin Peaks and Deep Creek presentation we had earlier at our last um, meeting. So we'll start off with a uh, update on the projects we did this year. So our main projects we did over at Sunset, Sunset this year was renovation on a couple two boxes. So it started here with number nine. Uh, back key box. So we have a picture of the old key box here up in the middle, and you can kind of see it from the picture, but the main point of the reservation renovation was to take the crown that has been in there caused by years and years of use and top dressing. Then over here, it, here's when it was the finish work done. So you can see kind of here in this front corner of the key box, that's how much elevation they changed onto that key box to keep, make it level. So they added about two and a half feet in this front corner, so that would be the, that the northwest corner of the key box. And also on this back side here by the pump station, they ended up adding another four feet of key box that was flat, so we gained a whole lot more key area than what we used to have. And down here in the middle, was a picture of when it was completed on uh, May 27th of this year. So, pretty big difference there on that key box. But not as big as number five box. So number five was probably one of the larger projects that made the most difference in before and after. This one with the uh, all taken out the humps and crown. We also decided to make it one larger key box instead of having two separate ones in the back. So what they ended up, the company ended up doing was um, moving about 18 inches of soil off the back key box, which was the blue one, and leveling it out with the white key box that was previously there, which also allowed them to add about five, four to five feet toward the very front of the key box. So between, the, down here in the middle, you can see the flat work they did. You can kind of tell by this picture the difference in elevations they did to um, level it out. So that back key box, we gained about 1,400 square feet of key space 
than what we originally thought we were going to have. So we had a pretty good increase in usable T area on the back. And then here's a picture in the lower right of the T right when the sod was laid and completed. We, this project was done on June 10th. So that's just the white and blue tea box. The next one that was done, we also did the forward teas on number five. So this one here had an awful lot of crown in it, a lot like the tea on number nine. But once they got everything stripped down, we were actually able to add another four feet to the front and four feet to the back of the tea box, so keeping it the same width, which also gave us about 1,400 square feet of usable tea area on the forward tea on five. So the middle picture here shows their dirt work. Um, their dirt work when they got it done. And excuse me, it was 400 square feet on this one, not 1,400. So then here on the right is a picture of the tea once it's completed during growing. This was completed on June 10th, and now all these teas were thrown in, cut back out to their T shape, and they're now fully thrown in and part of the course now. You can still see a few of the transition areas out there just from the difference in sod that is laid, but now everything is grown in and ready to be used. I'm pretty sure Ryan will agree that we haven't heard anything but positive feedback on all the tea boxes that we got done. It's been a night and day kind of restructure of that, the whole of all, all teams really. You have a level lot, a lot of the, a lot of the players are, were confused at first, but you know, it's been nothing but positive feedback on everything for that. Another project we completed at the uh, first part of 22 was got a new roof put on the maintenance shop here. It's kind of, you know, just time for a new roof on the maintenance shop, so that was one of the things we got done this year. But in, that was a much bigger project than just putting the shades <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the, there were yeah. some pretty significant Four issues hours. there, and uh, I think we, by able, being able to replace that roof, have extended the life of that building because oh, yeah. uh, we were um, given notice that if we didn't do something, we needed to get out of it. And so um, they, they did a really nice job, and things are much better than they had been. Yes. <laughs> And then I did an update a little bit ago on Sunset, or I spoke about that bomb project. So this was the this is the first map I received from our designer. He's still in the process of finishing the Sunset design with um, numbering out all the stations. But this is the new design of the irrigation system over at Sunset. So. Right now, sunset the uh, north side by where the clubhouse is, and the south side on the other side of Long's Peak and between Long's Peak and Third are two separate non-connected irrigation systems. The new design will connect the system to be one irrigation system with the uh, pipe going underneath Long's Peak here, right by two green and three P. So instead of having two separate irrigation systems with two completely different personalities, there'll be one complete irrigation system with the same pump station in this. With a newer pump station with the same irrigation. So this here for that all the we'll put all the head spacing to 65 feet, which right now they range anywhere from 60, 65 to 70 feet. So this will be a lot more uniform. Um, There'll be a leaf main line, which is the dark line that goes around in both areas, so that way the irrigation pressure will be more consistent. There'll be multiple ways the water will be fed to a certain area. 
you will see less uh, change in pressure down here from three green up on top of the hill by six green and seven feet. So uh, hope to see a lot more consistent watering pattern in the irrigation system we currently have over there. Okay, question? Yeah. Um, the heads, some, some of the, when you put the, put the distance to the, to the, are those going to be changed? Or new ones or updated, updated or? So the system at Sunset will be brand new pipe, but all the heads will be reused over there. And He's talking about the yard. No, the yard, the yard, 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 yeah, I think once the project is completed is when you guys will be doing the update. Well, it'll be part of the project. It's put on the bid, but it all depends on how much it, it's one of the line items on there, so it is included to be on uh, the uh, sprinkler heads. So we'll, we'll make sure that we get to take it care of. Don't you worry. Just got to fix it. Got to get the heads installed there. That's so. really important for <laughs> Yeah. That's a personal guy. Let's see, and then. Looking forward to 23. Just a few items we're going to look at doing, uh, doing our fixed asset in inventory. So, replacing items around the golf course that we need could be anywhere from appliances at the clubhouse, um, small hand tools, or other pieces of equipment around the maintenance shop, uh, work on broken fence posts around the perimeter of the course. And then, just like this year, um, depending on how we come out of winter, seed in bare areas that we can see come out of winter. So going into 23 and 24, we won't be doing as many projects on the golf course, just since they'll be disrupted with construction. So we won't be doing any car pass or main, major renovation projects until after the water project and the irrigation system are put in so that way we don't end up destroying all the work we just got done. Do you uh, connect, do you look at the ball washers things? You know, the, the stands? The stands. We do, that's more of a as needed basis when they get worn out or we notice that something needs attention. How do you, just you may have said about the subject, but how do you maintain those? Because like sometimes we'll be in water one, other times we'll be suds in another. There, there doesn't seem to be any consistency. That just, so in the middle of the summer, it's kind of hard with the evaporation, but that's something with between the maintenance crew and the marshals out there. Someone goes around and fills them up and checks them. It's supposed to be on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Sometimes it probably gets forgotten and that's where they get a little dry out of there. Do you think ball washers are necessary? Unfortunately, they are. So <laughs> everybody else is. Well, especially when you get the you know, when you get the rain, and then here, I mean, then you're going to get mud in your ball and all of this stuff. I, 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 I think you're going to have to towel, but the one problem is, is that you're on the plane, and if you want to have a place to get water, you know, if there's coolers, you can get some water out of that, that's fine. But if you have a wet towel, that's what I use most of the time. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's too hard to remember to get through the ball washer or whatever, or right. whatever else. We, uh, one main thing we had this year was the 100 year party over there at Sunset. I mentioned that on last meeting. There's just a few pictures of that evening. So, left before everyone showed up, and on the right, as the evening went down, we were, as we were all enjoying the sunset at Sunset. Music. <laughs> that, and that picture does not represent no. what it looked no. like because I, everybody I, was hugging on the two tree lines. Yeah. Yeah. I was amazed how well you got that cleaned up. I played the next day and you know around mm -hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning or something. Man, you wouldn't know that that was even there the night before. Yeah, we, the night before. Besides a couple yeah. random it was uh, incredible. And the model somewhere, besides that, everyone did a Really good job of picking up and we it was probably found any trash to morning that or hold the night up as we were picking up. Good. Good. 
hill here, going through some course conditions at sunset. This was my presentation I was supposed to do in October, so uh, all this stuff, the area on September 7th, so by now, everything at sunset's healed up. Um, no sign of aeration when we did it like two months ago almost already. So we'll be on the schedule again for fall, I mean not fall, spring of next year, probably somewhere mid-April. And then I think after this, we can add to my head. These healed in really quick, not too much sign of aeration, very more than a week and a half. Now it's just my imagination, but I thought the greens at sunset were incredible this year. I, you were a lot better than you have been, right? I've, I've heard that a lot from a, from a lot of people coming and going. Um, I don't Ryan, know Ryan and them did aeration on the Sabbath there. I don't know, what was it, like three days later even. I went out on the putting green on the, on the practice area. I had my daughter with me at the time, so I had her in carrier. I'm just rolling a few putts. And I couldn't tell that there was aeration done. Really and I nice. honestly thought they were the fastest they've been all year, too, right after this. Huh. And I mean, as a player, I'm, I was completely blown away. Yeah, I'm very right. happy with it. As a head professional, I'm extremely ecstatic about it when I hear customers saying, <coughs> Greens have been fantastic. That's the pride and joy, really, of all the golf courses. Those are those are our children. Of course, we take care of them. If we don't have the greens, we don't have anybody coming to play. That's true. That. Right now, here's us. Here's kind of a little schedule of what we've been doing to get ready for winter. Which um, we did another slight little venting or needle tiny in the first part of October just to help increase the airflow on the greens, help dry them out a little more. We've been, all the watering, compaction we do with the rolling and everything throughout the year definitely takes its toll on the greens, which on our side of it, we see as a black layer, which is when you cut a cup right underneath the um, root zone of the grass, there's a little bit of black organic material that builds up through the air. So putting some holes in the green to get some air moving down helps reduce that. So we're a little better going into winter and getting ready for the spring. Um, put down some fertilizer just after that to help get them a little, get them a little healthier going into the winter. Um, this year, over at sunset, we were able to aerate the entire golf course. We yeah. aerated the greens, yeah. we aerated um, the pieces around, the approaches. We were able to use the um, yeah. tractor mounted aerator from Twin Peaks here to do sunset. So we were able to do half inch tines, four to five inches deep on all the fairways. And also afterwards, they were able to take, we have, um, it's called an airway. It takes little quarter inch wide by five inch long knives that you drive around as kind of put slits everywhere and we were able to hit the course again just to help uh, increase the airflow and get ready for some moisture for the winter. Um, the bottom parts here, right now we're kind of waiting on what Mother Nature allows us to do. We were scheduled to do our bulk fertilizer app last Tuesday, <coughs> but our little impromptu snowstorm <laughs> kind of changed that plan. And we were supposed to go again tomorrow, but with nothing melting off, we're on the schedule again for next week. And we'll see how it goes, and then um, we'll be waiting for the greens to clear off to apply, apply one last dose of fungicide to them to help for snow mold. So if we do end up having another spring like we did this year, where the greens are covered for an extended period of time, we won't have to worry about any disease or fungus wanting to grow underneath there, which helps us by a little time and the greens come a lot better out in the spring than if we don't do it. And kind of here, here's just a small group of a small group of guys who work over there at sunset. Uh, ranging from Danny, who's our one full-time guy over here, and the rest of them are all the temporary guys that work over there. So between all of them and myself, I'm a mechanic that's 
puts his time between here and um, Sunset, trying to make Sunset as good a product as we can get for the golfers over there. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions, that's all I have. Yeah. Brian, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? I mean, really, the, the only, I mean, 100 year party was the biggest thing that happened for the year. Um, you know, tournaments, we had a lot of great tournaments. I mean, the course was fantastic to be able to produce um, a lot of great tournaments for, for the people. Um, you know, honestly, um, I don't have much. It's just thank you guys. Thank the customers. We, we try to thank everyone because it, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Sunset exists, Twin Peaks, U Creek, we all exist because of the customers, really. And with the weather, everything, it's been a fantastic year. It really has. I know I know my business has seen probably the best year it's ever had, you know, but that's also because we have gotten more people in the door. It's always how we try to run our businesses. You know, if we get more people there, we may make some some money to, to you know pay the employees. But, you know, we're there for the golfers. We're there for the golfers, so I don't, I don't really have much. Thank you guys. Any other questions? Hey, that next line was two of those two or three Good job, Larry. Yep, he covers that. Great job. I appreciate you sharing your feedback. Yeah, we're, nope. We're putting some sort of back in the chair. Yes, so we have two openings on the board. Um, Marshall, we interviewed this week. John indicated tonight, when we were waiting for the meeting to start, that he had applied for the board, so I need to reach out to the clerk's office. But um, it was uh, Rick and Annie and I did the interviews, and we, need, we would like to recommend to reappoint Marshall. We'd like a motion on that. And then I'll get back to you, John, as soon as I hear from the clerk's office. Yeah. Okay. Somebody willing to make that motion? Make a motion to recommend. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Any additional items from staff? Nope. Items for the board. Well, let me just say I thank you, everybody on the board this year. Thank you for your support and cooperation, attending. Hope you all have a happy holiday. Maybe we can go on soon. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Yeah, thank well. you. Good. Appreciate it. Yep. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. And approved. We are. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. <laughs>